Yo, well, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sensor here, bringing you guys a video here today on how to create your own font. Now, this video here is sponsored by Font Self. Now, the length of videos, this, this is a pretty lengthy video, but this is not for the reason of Font Self being any kind of difficult like that, but I just went into a lot of detail on how to create your own font. Gave you so much insight that I feel like how I kind of kind of figured out on my way of creating my own font. This is my second font, right? So I'm not a font genius or anything like that, but Font Self really truly made it very, very easy for me personally. And of course, with that being said, I made a font for today's video here that I've been working on for the past like two weeks week and a half at like kind of like really harshly but uh, it's called quantum you can download it right now it's currently on Selfie and later on beyond defont.com as well if you guys want to just support it over there as well but it's on Selfie. it is free it's for you guys to use it's for you guys to cherish it's a very very cool font personally I think it's I think it's super super dope I worked very hard on it so hope you guys do enjoy it um so yeah, this, like I said, font self just makes it super, super, super easy to do everything. And so if, if you ever wanted to, it's very easy to just sort of click on each individual letter if you create it inside Photoshop or Illustrator, by the way. This works for both Photoshop and Illustrator. So both programs are separate. You can buy them a bundle. But of course, as well, if you guys wanted to, you can use my discount code down below for 10% off. It kind of works, I believe, until June 30th of 2018. So if you guys want to just go ahead and just purchase it, it's very, very cool. Personally, I did purchase my own license six months back when I, may, of course, made the OSIS font. If you guys remember that font? So I made that. Very very, very long time ago so i purchased my own license personally so you can say i this that to me was money well spent of course as well i got a sponsorship with them as well because they of course supported my channel stuff like that and i supported their program so i want to share it with you guys as well and so yeah i purchased it myself so you can get it of course for 10 percent off though i didn't have to, i didn't have that luxury so you guys should probably go ahead and do that if you guys want to go ahead and just kind of start making your own fonts so hope you guys do enjoy today's video i know it's like a little bit lengthy but if you guys want to really learn how to make fonts i i kind of give you guys my best you know newbie insight but of course it's still comes out very very well i love quantum i love what it you know stands for i love it personally it's my little baby right now and i hope you guys do and download it enjoy it and i want to see you guys tweet me everything and of course maybe tweet at font stuff as well be like yo thanks for supporting so so you know kind of thing so hope you guys enjoy today's video here today talk to you guys later and i'll see you guys in the video all right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. I'm going to set up my little font. I'm going to sort of give you guys like a little, I guess, inside of why I set things up the way I set them up, sort of like what I've learned throughout the way of kind of creating my own font and stuff like that. So I want to show you guys how I'm going to set it up. And first, I'm going to start off with, of course, using my sketch I'm going to be using for the actual video for the, the one that I actually did for you guys, which you can download, of course, right now. But uh, basically, show you guys how I'm going to set the thing up, how I'm going to set up the boxes and kind of give you guys the inside of why I'm going to set it up, right? I kind of repeated the exact same thing I just said, but whatever. So first, I'm going to start off with would be using the view and showing my grid. Now, of course, it's for basic reasons, as in it gives you guys way more control of kind of making sure that things are even, making sure that things are really nice and tight, make sure it flows very naturally and evenly. But this is also giving us some really good insight, of course, where the middle of our document page happens to be at, right? So, of course, if you guys want to know, I'm in the file new. I'm currently in a 3000 by 3000 points, right? Not pixels. I have it on points. Is it really a difference? I just find it a little more easier to kind of pinpoint things and kind of snap to points, stuff like that. But you can use pixels, I think. I don't, it doesn't really matter. I would say use points, honestly. Anyway, 3000 by 3000 points. I press create. Of course, this is now what I'm currently in. And I use my, of course, show grid option. And now what I basically do is, if you guys did not know, inside Photoshop, you can use rulers and stuff like that, right? You can hide them with using control H, but not in here. This is actually when you use rulers in Illustrator, they're actually in their own individual individual layer so of course you have to make a new layer naturally to actually use and allow yourself to actually move and snap some uh little grid lines in here right or ruler lines right so control r to bring up your rulers just like so now i'm going to take my left rule over here drag it in i'm going to kind of like guess where my middle is i'm going to say it's somewhere we'll just say it's somewhere around here right so i'm going to zoom in really quickly and make sure i have it exactly on this middle line right here that i'm going to call my middle line right so that's my horizontal middle line um and we're going to go ahead, no, vertical middle line and we're going to do our, our horizontal middle line right now right so i'm going to drag this one down here as well and i'm going to just say that's close enough <laughs> and we're going to zoom in and then just say that's our middle line right there as well so now that i have this sort of like vision that we're the actual crosshair of my uh i guess my box is going to be at i can then take my sketch in here and kind of give myself a nice, let's just place it. Let's try our hardest to place it on a grid line here. I put my opacity down so I can make sure I can place on a grid line. We'll say right about there. So about one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so that's pretty good right there. So I'm gonna, I kind of place it where I believe my middle could be at for this little A concept that I have going on for my font, right? So what I'm gonna basically do, is I'm gonna hide this down and we're just gonna simply do as I just did. You saw me cap these little boxes on the left hand side. So I'm gonna just take my rulers here Go back to my ruler a little page here right drag this down and we'll say three right there and then we're gonna go ahead and just say three up top as well 
just like so and I basically see that it's kind of one two three four it's about four about ba ba boxes to the left and right right so I'm gonna say to myself one box here two three and four I'll give her this so you can see exactly what I'm looking at right so I'm gonna make sure I put this exactly on the line for this one exactly on the line for this one and make sure this is exactly on the line as well just like so and of course four boxes on the right hand side as well so one two three and four just like that zoom in a little bit more and let's just see if we have it right right on our sketch and yeah we have it pretty much about right so what i'm gonna basically do for myself right now is i could probably make this a little bit bigger i would probably extend it by like four and kind of give myself a little more kind of space to work with so if i wanted to i'll kind of like just take my old rulers and just expand it by four again so double it that way i can kind of double my size of my sketch but just trying to give you guys an example of what i would do kind of separate and make it a little more easier for you but for me it's a little bit easier for me to work with a bigger just a sort of a bigger image and uh, so right now i'm just kind of like you know free balling it right now but kind of give you exactly the same idea as what i'm gonna be doing so right we have our little box set up now right so if i just uncheck this sketch right here this is a little box that we can actually work in but the things i would do as well to kind of give you guys a way easier kind of aspect of what you're going to be doing is give yourself a little bit of leeway give yourself leeway space when it comes to something like uh using a b and an a where those two letters might not actually work out in the same exact uh maybe like the same exact how you would say the thickness or the weight of it so let's just for example i'm just going to use a different font really quickly i'm just going to use one of my favorites evo gria right quickly just make a new layer Right, I'm going to use a A, for example, because these are some of the ones that I find that are most exactly what I'm talking about right now. I'm trying to give you the example. Put that on the line right there. Drag this one down here and make a B, just like so. So as you can see, the A, of course, has a little bit more space automatically. You can see that, right? So it's about maybe like six pixels more towards the right than the B itself, because exactly as the actual font might, or the, excuse me, the letter for the font just might, might, not, might not be balanced as you would think so of course you're going to give yourself a little bit of leeway so for me if i was going to say that it's going to be happening for me maybe just kind of like give yourself more guidelines to the left or right for like an m or kind of squeeze things in maybe so if i wanted to i'm just going to drag this one in here as well and drag this in here as well right so i would say to myself that's on the line actually and is this one on the line no it is not so for this A, you can see on the sketch, right? So this A is going to go from here to here. I would say for a B, maybe you start the B. I'm going to move my sketch and not my line. Just like so. Move my sketch and not my line. Move that over a little bit. Maybe I'll start my B right here and then end it over here. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? Uh, right. I'm going to kind of give myself a little bit of leeway space to kind of work with. So that way I have it just as evenly just great as possible right so maybe the c itself might have a little more maybe you know a little more space like that so maybe for my left hand side over here i'll go ahead and just hide this or after i move this over again right i'll say to myself let's go ahead and put this little middle piece right here i'm gonna put it in the middle of these two and let's just say if our scene is a little more kind of like your C, of course, has a little arch, of course, right? That's going to have an opening. It's probably going to be a little difficult if you're not using sort of straight lines to make a C. Like I, if I was using like a straight line, new layer, you know, straight lines to make a C, right? Something like that. But some people, of course, are going to have to use something like this. So this is going to be a little more space because, of course, this part right here is going to kind of give you guys more, I guess, you know, you need more space to work with, basically, right? So that's going to basically be saying to myself is let's go ahead and delete these right here. Give myself this line right here so i can start my c right here my b starts here and then my a starts here but this is basically all kind of going to work out right so we do an e maybe you start it right here right so kind of just kind of give yourself a nice little leeway space and be like a little brackets kind of work with and if this is hard for you to see itself because right now it's on a white background with a blue uh how do you say a blue uh grid line uh, ruler line right i'm gonna say to myself let's name this what it should be named these should all be in one thing they're all just rulers Right, see the guys are all in one separate little layer here. We'll call that ruler. We're gonna lock this down. We're gonna make a new layer. And we're gonna simply just take our nice little rectangle marquee tool, which happens to be M on our keyboard. And we're just gonna simply take just like so. Now I'd make sure this is perfectly on the line, but for the sense of the video, I'm just gonna promise myself that it's on the line and not worry about it, right? Lower this opacity down, maybe like 20% or so. And we'll take this one over here, make another uh, little shape right here for this little part right here lower this down to like 15 percent and then we'll take this one over here we'll keep that on 15 why not i promised myself i wouldn't care if it was on the line but it's not but for the sake of just knowing that you know what i'm trying to like get the point across something like that and then we'll just make one more duplicate 
for this little one right here and kind of give you guys the example of what I'm talking about, right? So you can, you can see it a little more easier on this white background once you do you can just hide this. And we'll just call this uh, hidden layer, right? This will kind of give you guys more of an insight of exactly where your boxes are and exactly how to help you guys out. And I would say pretty much right here, you're almost done. There's also one more thing you have to do, of course, is making sure you have a crossbar line. So for me, I'm gonna use my letters. Uh, this is not my updated version of it because I'll be, of course, scrapped some letters. Um, but just because I know I have this, you know, version one of it, I believe I think B and H might have the crossbar. So what I mean by crossbar is if I just put this in here, right? I'll say to myself, this is where my crossbar has to be, right here and right here. And relevance to this grid right here, maybe it's gonna put in the middle. Um, let's just say, take our rulers, put one right here. Let's just put this in the middle for now. And we'll put this one here right is that in the middle of this one no let's put it like in the middle of this one as well um but of course for my example for my font exactly i did a little bit of a different crossbar but this is what i mean by crossbar right as you can see my h and my b if i just take my h put it in a different uh lettering right here it's in its own separate thing if i just drag this across to the b you can see it lines up perfectly with the b that way this is a little crossword right here is kind of like giving you guys hey this is exactly where i want to have my like thanks to an a my a doesn't personally have a crossbar but you can see that the b has a crossbar it goes right into the h things like the f but of course i fixed that so you can see things you have to fix is the f doesn't have the exactly lined up with the crossbar for the h and the b so make sure that things like that kind of flows a little bit better for you guys but for me of course in the update that you guys have right now currently for download is all kind of perfectly even in its own sense right so that's what i mean by crossbar and basically, I believe now you can say to yourself, hey, I'm ready to get this thing going. So that was the setup version or set up your kind of setting up your font itself and the most kind of simple also kind of giving the most information that I personally can. And hopefully it kind of helps you out when you're actually making your own font. And of course, the next part is going to be kind of creating my font and then, of course, bringing it into font self and showing us how really honestly easy it really is. And uh, let's just uh, go ahead from there. So let's go ahead and just get this thing going. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and just show you guys how I'm going to start creating my font. Now, just so you guys know, you can use and create your font any physical way that you personally want. So you can come to like doing things in a brush format. Maybe you have a really cool brush. You want to kind of use a tablet and kind of make every letter yourself if you want to choose to do that. You guys definitely can. You can even choose to like build it any physical way that you want to. You can even put color in it. You can put strokes on it. It does not matter whatsoever. As long as you have it in an individual layer and when you place it inside font self, you can then choose what letter or number or punctuation, whatever it happens to be. And you can sort of just figure out, you know, that's the letter that it wants to be. And it'll be like, hey, that's the letter. And then you can move on, right? So you can physically create whatever way you want to choose to do it. But for me, I'm going to be using the shape builder tool, which basically means I'm going to be taking two individual shapes and then cutting them out. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I want to figure out what my weight or my thickness of each letter is going to be. So for me, I'm going to say to myself, I think out of all of my sketches here for my little, uh, uh, let me just put this up a little bit more so you can probably see a little bit better. I'm going to say out of all of my sketches, I'm going to figure out what letter for me is going to probably be that one that's going to really understand sort of, I guess, kind of help me out with everything else, right? So I'm going to personally say that my E happens to be one of the sort of like most important ones because, of course, if this thickness around here isn't accurate, then my F is not going to be accurate, my H is not going to be accurate, things like my S is not going to be accurate. So you guys got to understand that you got to pick a letter out of which one, what your style happens to be with your sketch, and then say that I'm going to choose that letter to kind of figure out my weight and my thickness and stuff like that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just hide this. Excuse me, I'm going to say 50% opacity. So excuse me, I'm going to use my E here. I'm going to drag it inside my little box. I'm going to use this bottom line here. I'm going to use my line right here for the left hand side of it. And then we're going to get this thing going. Lock that down. I have a new layer. I'm going to call it reference. That way I can kind of figure out what my thickness and stuff is going to be, right? So what I'm going to actually start off with telling you guys is you're going to be using stuff like snapping to grid, snapping to pixel a lot. So if you guys know how to use that, go to view, snap to grid. I'm going to turn this off for a second so I can show you guys my struggles for a second. I'm going to show you guys exactly what happens when you use it. So I'm going to uncheck that. That's not checked at all for default. So that's why I'm kind of showing you guys how to do it. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool right here. This is kind of how I'm going to be going about this is because sort of all of my sort of thicknesses, all my lines are very straightforward. So rectangle tool is going to work out very, very well for me. For me. What the hell did I say like that for? But we're going to just go ahead and start over here. So over here, drag it all the way over here. And let's just kind of like, I'm going to do it wrong on purpose really quickly for you guys, but just trying to show you guys. So you can see me kind of going in and kind of figuring out where everything happens to be. But if you're struggling like something like this right here, this is what I'm talking about. Snapping to grid makes it super, super easy. So view, snap to grid. I don't want to struggle to for too long, but you guys understand. Once I snap it there, it snaps to grid very, very easily. It makes it super, super simple. 
and something like right here on the bottom make sure that's snap to grid and it makes it super perfect so that's why i would say turn on snap to grid understand that that is a very very big issue if you you know don't usually usually do it all right i'm gonna hide my sketch for a second and for the sake of the video i'm gonna say to myself let's just use two boxes as an example here so i'm gonna drop that down to two boxes right here as my thickness and i'm gonna say to myself does this work i'm gonna take my sketch um and just like drag this one up here and then automatically I'm going to say, of course, this is not going to work because I have no space for my E. So this thickness already is not going to work whatsoever. So I'm going to delete these again. And I'm going to go ahead and go with, a, let's say, one and a half. So I'm going to drag this down to about one and a half, which I believe is this one right here. Is that one and a half? I believe that's one and a half. So if I just bring up my sketch again, let's drag this up and then drag this down here. Let's see if this works. And I'm just going to hide my sketch. I'm going to say this pretty much does work. This is not in the middle, as you can see right here. Our little uh, bar lines, our crossbar lines. Now that's in the middle. So that's, of course, a little help right there. Um, so I'm going to say to myself, that's pretty okay. And I think, honestly, we can go at this thickness. So one and a half boxes for me is going to work. So what I would do automatically if you're going to use something like this, like the shape builder method, is take one of these, drag this out, and then just say, hey, this is over here. If I ever need it, if I ever lose the thickness, if I ever cut something off wrong, you can have that one thickness that is, of course, going to stay default for you the entire time, right? So I'm going to say that is pretty accurate. That's kind of exactly how I want to have it. So I will go ahead and bring my sketch again. And I'm going to say, all right, there's a little crossbar right here. So let's take the same exact thickness over here. And let's just put it on a nice angle. Holding shift, by the way, is going to give you a nice 40 degree angle turn every single time or 45 degrees angle. What is it? It's like 15 it's 15 intervals anyway there we go so let's just say right here we're gonna put this on the grid now something like this you're probably gonna find yourself doing something like this a lot as well that's of course you're gonna probably turn off snap to grid maybe use pixel maybe a pixel will work let me see if pixel would work pixel does not work either because it's gonna skip that one line isn't it yep it is so I'm just gonna have to turn off all of them zoom in very closely and then make sure it's on the line as much as possible, which I believe right there is. So, of course, that's an example of not using just the snapping to grid method or something like that, because, of course, it's not always going to happen. I don't know exactly why, but, of course, turning it on and off is not that big of a hassle. But for my sketch here, I have a little bit of a little space going flat down right here. So I'm going to have to make another shape. And let's make sure we have snap to grid on. And just like so. Now I can basically do is this is the shape builder method, right? So if I just highlight this entire piece right here while all the, everything else is hidden, I can just simply just use shift and my keyboard to bring up the shape builder tool, which happens to be right over here, right? So if I'm holding uh, alt on my keyboard, just like so, you can see that actually comes a minus button with my little mouse click right here. So what happens is if I just, you know, of course, click on it, it deletes it, right? So that's, of course, minus is delete plus equals add. But basically, if I wanted to say if I want to just take this shape right here alone, I click on it. And then now it's its own separate shape, right? So the entire premise of this is holding shift M, right? Or excuse me, clicking shift M to bring up the shape builder tool, holding alt, and then simply just dragging, cutting things out that I do not want, which happens to be all of this. Now, if I hide this, oops, no, if I hide the rulers really quickly, you can see that's pretty much exactly how I wanted to have my sketch. So if I just kind of drop this reference here, you can see the, you see the resemblance, right? However, I have a little bit of a weird thickness going on right here. But to fix this, how would I basically do that? I would say to myself, let's just take a reference. Of course, I have this one over here. And let's just make sure that this thickness over here matches. And it does. So that's pretty much as accurate. I would still call it pretty accurate to me. Um, let's just say... Oops. Let's just leave it as so, I think. We're just probably just going to leave it just like that, actually. Not too big of a problem. All right, that's fine. I just want to kind of, I just, I'm trying to tweak, but I don't, I shouldn't really be tweaking. Anyway, this, thing, this, this right here kind of bothered me right here, but it's okay for now. I'm going to just say to myself, we're just going to let that be. But basically what I would do right now is highlight all this entire stuff, right? So if you want to learn how to kind of combine all the stuff that you just cut it out into one single shape, basically, is you want to go to Windows and you want to have Pathfinder uh, table unlocked, right? So, or excuse me, kind of brought to you, right? So I have my Pathfinder right here. So you see shape modes, you see combine, something like Unite over here, excuse me, minus front, intercept, whatever you, all you have to do is know the first one which happens to be Unite. So if I just click on this, as you see, all this is highlighted, click on this, it all makes it one single nice looking shape. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to go ahead and say to myself that I'm going to go ahead and say that my thickness right here, or the, I guess the width of this E, I'm going to put my rulers back in just is not looking good. It looks too boxy for me. So why not just highlight all these points here by using the direct selection tool and then just simply just dragging it by holding shift to keep it on the same exact horizontal axis. And let's just say 
Maybe about there is what I want it as. And I would say that's pretty, pretty accurate to how I want it. Truthfully. Okay. That's fine. Now, I can see my sketch here. It has a little part going up here. So I can just take this, my reference block here. And then let's just say where we want to cut it at. And let's just, okay, we don't have our thickness. So, so in my font, I have a sort of little cut thickness thing going on here. So you can see this little thickness here. I'm just going to go by uh, I and just say like a half of a uh, sort of box here. So I can just take this, hold alt by you make a duplicate, just dragging right over. I'm going to use there's the holding shift, excuse me. Trying to make sure I get exactly where I want to kind of have it. So about right there, highlight this entire piece. And then simply just cut it out just like so. This should be cut out as well. And that should be cut out as well. And this just really just shouldn't even be here. So just get rid of that. If I want to keep that, mm, no. But you can just kind of figure out what you want to have, kind of have it like that. But that's kind of how I'm going to have this. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get rid of my rulers for a second. You can see. So now I kind of follow exactly what my sketch actually looks like. So if I just hide the reference, right? But I just changed my thickness a little bit and kind of gave it perfect, perfect kind of little uh, cuts right here. So for me, this is my main block thickness, my main block sort of weight, I would call it. And this is my cut weight. I don't know, of course, your font's probably not going to have any cuts in it, but I'm just going to give you guys what I'm talking about, making sure you have defaults on your left or whatever like that, if you need them, and that way you can sort of say to yourself, this is how I want to have it. But, for something like an E, it might not have the same, of course, thickness or the same, I guess, uh, direction of the A or something like that, right? So you can see myself, I kind of went away from my rulers, right? So that we can see over here, I don't need all this space over here for this E. But I started on this line right here, right? So I'm going to say to myself, I'm going to put another ruler in here. I'm going to hide this, unhide this, excuse me. Click on my ruler and then drag this in here. I'm going to say right here, maybe things like the F, uh, things like the, right here, it's also kind of broken. I should fix that. So things like the F right here, or maybe uh, the S can be this sort of like, probably not the S, I'll probably like bring the S over here. But you can see that you probably have to fix this and say, hey, this is where I kind of have this stop. So ruler is now fixed. You can hide that layer once again, and you're pretty much good to go. So that's basically my E for this right here. And then basically my entire sort of, basically everything else kind of follows the same exact premise. I'm just using the shape builder tool. So I can then, of course, if I need to combine it all together again. And so for what I would do personally is once you have it in here, of course, you're in a big reference. You might have more uh, layers to work with in here. So when you combine it, it actually combines it all in one layer right here. You can see it says group right here, right? Just like so. I would just make a new layer very simply. So to sort of kind of make a no individual group, you have to make a new individual layer. So then you can just take this, take your E, drag it right into that new layer, call it an E right and then just hide the layer and then you would move on to your next letter so honestly this for me kind of works the best for me because this is kind of how i actually formulate and create my logos so for me this kind of works perfectly i kind of love the font how it kind of works out so if there's anything to take out of this using the shape builder tool if you're going to have like flat lines and like a rectangular shape or a boxy shape might be the way to go with using the rectangle tool itself but also having little defaults right here on the left hand side to say hey if i ever mess up or if i ever need to bring something in that's already cut out like, like, like this was right i can just bring in our exact sort of reference weight and thickness and it kind of has a very very easy vibe to it right so hopefully you guys understand that part i'm going to show you guys with um little layers that i had from uh my version one of the font and then bring it into a new kind of folder to kind of understand it and understand how to use font self itself because this is right here i just want to give a, if you want to give a quick rundown of course, we're going to make a new font. It's going to be using, we're going to be clicking on that. You can open individual fonts by using this. You'll see all the characters. You can use something like over here, the preview method. You can only look at punctuation if you want to, only numbers if you want to, right? Just by unchecking and hiding it. You can go ahead and just look at things like A through Z. If you had a full sort of line of A through C in each individual layer, you can just simply highlight all of it. Click on this and it'll make sure all the uppercase A through Z is what you selected. And that's basically it, right? So if you want to do something like that, the way you save it, by the way, is using the export. So if you press export, just like so, you just simply rename your font, save it. I would do that probably every once in a while. Um, so of course, if I just click over here in advanced, we're just going to go ahead and look at things like spacing. So line spacing, as in things like, so spacing, let's just say the sort of space in between each individual layer, the scale of it, make it even more bigger than it happens to be. Things like kerning, which happens to be basically spacing in between individual layers and, or excuse me, individual letters or numbers or lowercase letters themselves. So A and B right here happens to be a little bit, uh, you know, I guess far away. So if I wanted to say to myself, hey, let's go ahead and put, you know, A and B a little closer together. I already probably have it already done, but I probably have to fix it a little bit. But like I said, this is a different version of it. Anyway, if I just make it A, capital A, right? Let's look right here, capital A and then capital B, 
right? We'll say to ourselves, hey, let's make this a little more sort of closer together. I'm gonna go ahead and just put negative 50 in, right? So you can see that the spacing in between these two, that's lowercase a and <laughs> uppercase b. There you go, right? So the space in between those two individual layers together, um, just kind of get more separated, or you can make it bigger by just putting a positive number in. But I'm gonna get to that in a second, but let's just go ahead and actually get into putting our font, all of our letters inside and kind of understanding a little more, right? All right, guys, so last I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna put in my created font letters. I already have these kind of like set. This is a version one of the actual font itself that you guys already can download in the description down below. Um, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm gonna place them in and kind of like how it kind of works, right? I kind of give you a rundown in the previous clip, but I wanna give you guys, of course, the full on look and actually how I'm gonna put in, in each individual letter. Um, so basically, if you guys wanna know really quickly as well, if you're gonna be using circles for like the whole thing about the shape builder tool, I would definitely use uh the sort of like look, look at this right this all matches up perfectly as well you can do that very very easily by just using a stroke so if you just made a circle i just want to click and show you guys right because it kind of does matter i want to make sure your circles are also perfect so if i just line this up with the left hand side or right hand side uh, i would probably say the left hand side of your rectangle marquee tool marquee tooled rectangle right your thickness a rectangle turn this off turn our fill off turn on a stroke path just like so Go to your stroke settings. If you don't have all these settings here, make sure you press show options. You're just gonna say high options, just like so. Turn on the align stroke to the inside, it has to be the middle, right? I'm gonna go ahead and say to myself that we're gonna just click on the weight here. And we're just gonna say, I believe it's 109. I believe that's what it is, right? So if I just kind of like highlight this, zoom in here, you can see that 109 happens to be my thickness stroke for this entire thing. So then I can just click on this and then that's my circle stroke for the sort of thickness as well if I need to do things like a B or like the C or the O or something like that. So that kind of works all for this right here. However, if you ever need to as well, so things, how do you cut this thing out, right? If I just cut this out with the shape below so you can see yourself, you're gonna find options like this or find you know struggles like this. It's because you have to make this stroke path into a fill path and it's very easy to do actually. If you just click over here and then click on the, I believe it's object, uh, expand appearance just like so and right away you're gonna see you might have a table pop up for you I don't know why it happens for me every once in a while but you have a table that probably says fill or uh, expand or whatever whatever the default table happens to pop up just press okay and you're good to go so now if I just you know take this rectangle again cut things out you'll see that it doesn't actually have a stroke path anymore so that's one thing I want to actually really quickly mention and now let's go to get to the whole part where I'm kind of like putting in our letters right so I have all my letters right here so there's a B C D all the way into of course Z so I'm gonna go ahead and say to myself that this is where my A is. Now before I do that, open up font self. I'm gonna press new. We're gonna be taking a new font. So of course, if you already had a font that's already created for me, I already have quantum, of course, this is quantum regular. If I wanted to make a new style, you can actually make a new style that ha happens to be basically kind of grouping the fonts together. So uh, if I made a new style and said, hey, I wanna make a new style, I can say I want it to be bold italic or bold italic or other like maybe like a uh, thinner or light version of it like something like that right i don't want to do that but just so you guys know that is an option and actually actually makes it super easy for you guys to actually have uh different individual groups on the right hand side you can actually choose the difference between the styles and you have to choose each individual different font so just make sure that's a thing that you guys know and understand um hopefully you guys understood that because i kind of talked pretty fast there but of course that's me and dude i kind of talk fast anyway we're gonna make a new overall font right so you're gonna have this table here it's not gonna be this big for you maybe this small right here so all you really have to do is you see all my groups are in uh so all my letters are each individual little layer groups so if i just take my highlight tool here if you want to use v on your keyboard which happens to be the <clears throat> this is the direct selection tool this one happens to be which one is this, this is like the move tool no the selection tool so the difference between using this tool the direct selection tool and the selection tool happens to be you won't ever you will make sure that whatever's clicked inside the group right if i just click on one thing it'll make sure you click everything inside the group so if you did the direction selection tool it would only click on this and what happens is if i drag this in here you'll see that it only clicks on that part that you clicked on so make sure you'll probably be using the uh the top one right here which is direct selection right so just like so if i just click on one thing now drag it in You'll see now both the two extended parts of the A are now actually in there. So uh, automatically you're gonna see you actually drag in, excuse me, I just like whistled. How the hell did that happen? Um, click on the B, drag this in as well for now, right? You can see automatically you're gonna have these little blank spots here. So what's gonna happen to yourself, you're just gonna just put in A. So this is uppercase A. So make sure you, of course, hold shift to put uppercase A, uppercase B, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can put any letter at all without actually putting in the actual letter itself. What actually what happens it happens to be what actually it happens to be. What it happens to actually be there gotcha i gotcha anyway so you can see of course if i just drag on this really quickly again let's just drag one in here in just like so it's blank make it c and then all of a sudden it's just it's it's that easy right so what i'm gonna do now is i'm just gonna drag all these in drag the d in 
Uh, hmm, okay. And let's do E. Okay. Let's do F in here. Now, like I said, these are not all the updated versions, but I'm just kind of like giving you guys, this is version one, right? So V1 right there, you can see the, the title of it right in here. So some things might have changed if you guys see the differences, uh, like the J and stuff like that. I made the J a little thinner. Uh, let's just say the K in here, drag it all in here. Now, while you're dragging along, you can actually find yourself you typing in right here. So I want to type in like what GH things. Oh, I don't, I don't have the numbered yet, but I only have A and B right now or A, B and C. You can see you can type it in the preview right there. Um, so I'm going to keep on going. J, K, L, M, N. There's a different N right there. What the heck? So you can see I kind of probably dragging a different version of one, but whatever. P. Right, so I'm gonna just quickly just show you guys when I have Z in here. I'm gonna quickly speed this up because it's a little, not tedious, but I don't wanna take up too much time. You guys, I'm just dragging letters right here. All right, and the last letter is Z. We just dragged that right in there. So now what I have to do is, of course, go back in here and just name all these what they are. I'm gonna turn cap locks on. So click on R, enter. Q, enter, V, enter, U, enter. And this is just like if you didn't do it in the beginning, but of course I did not, so I'm just gonna quickly do it now. You can see how simple it is, just like putting it in here. M, K, that's a J, not a K, that's an I, that's an H. Now, just in case you wanna see what happens if you put multiple different things in, if I put an H again, as we just did before, I press that, it asks me if I wanna replace it, ignore it, or alternate it, I'm just gonna say ignore, and we're gonna make sure we press G, because that's what makes sure we have no duplicates of it. So, <clears throat> When it comes to if you ever wanted to kind of update a letter, so like I said, I had different versions. So of course, all you would have to do is if you want to say, I don't like how this Z looks here, let's just change this to Z really quick. Let's just really quickly finish this really quick though as well. X, W, and then D. Now it's all done. Now let's say if ourselves, I don't like how this D isn't, I don't know, shrinked right here. Or if I don't like how this D right here is like not shrinked either. So I'm going to just see, I said D, Z, right? Have a Z right there, right? So you can see how it looks right here. It'll update very easily. All I have to do is just take it drag it in now i'm going to say this is a z and it's going to tell me if i want to of course replace it or ignore it i'm going to say replace you can see right here it updates it and now it's updated over here as well so it's really easy to update letters as well right so now i'm going to say to myself <clears throat> we're going to be working with capital letters right now i'm going to just say you can look at letter spacing right so if i just kind of like you can let's just type in uh font self Letter spacing. So if I just kind of like shrink this, you can see the sort of spacing in between. It's almost like using the VA. If I use the VA table, this is basically what you'd be looking at, right? So if I want to zoom in right here, right, you can just click on this top left right here. You can see what's going to be happening. If I just typed, if what I was doing, basically shrinking this right here, right? So what happens here, I'm going to leave that as it was though. So if, for every reason, if you have like a really, really like sort of like very wide font, this might have, you might have to do this yourself. I personally did not. I didn't have to work with uh, letter spacing or line spacing, anything like that, or scale of it, because I don't need to make it any bigger than like that. But what I'm gonna show you guys really quickly is kerning, because that's one of the most important and one of the most time consuming things in the universe. So I'm gonna just quickly go in advanced. We're gonna go with two kerning, and we're just gonna simply click over here and we're gonna type letters like A, Y. We're gonna do like uh, E, G's. I keep pressing the, uh, the cap locks button. Um, maybe like, let's just look at oh why You can look at things right here, for example, as well. But I want to just quickly show you exactly what it does first. So kerning, you're going to say there's letters in the alphabet, of course, that your font that might just not look great when they actually flows, right? That was not English. Um, basically, letters, you're going to find spacing that's just very, very awkward because, of course, how the, uh, I guess, the font that you might be created itself. Maybe you have a very boxy font where you might have to have uh, like, like if I use, for example, my other font that I had, Osis, right? If I just type this in, I'm going to show you there's a difference really quick so you can see exactly what I'm talking about without looking and sounding like an idiot. We're going to go ahead and just press AY. So something like this, this font right here, I didn't use any kerning whatsoever because it's all boxy, right? It's all very up and down, very simple, all the same exact width. So it's something like this, I don't need AY, but for something like this, where the spacing is a little bit different, you need to figure out that spacing and kind of figure out how to make it a little bit closer. And that is what kerning is. So if I want to say to myself, these are all capital letters, by the way. So capital A on my left, capital Y on my right. My value is basically either is going to be going negative, so negative 60, negative 90, positive 80, positive whatever, if you want to put spacing in between it, because maybe you have a different sort of, I don't know, outlook on that. Anyway, so negative, I'm going to say drop it down to like negative 150 automatically. So I'm going to say that's probably not even close enough. So if I need to, I can write a word out that says like A. You can kind of see to yourself, 
what if I just kind of put this back to zero really quickly? You can see that this does not even look right, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, so negative 50 didn't kind of work for me. So excuse me, negative 150 didn't work for me. Let's put on negative 200. And I would say that looks way better personally, right? So that's our AY kerning. And then if you have lowercase letters, that happens to be the same exact as your uppercase, like mine happen, happens to be. I would just do the same exact thing really quickly. Uh, lowercase a, lowercase y, negative 200, right? So if I just put positive 200, you can see it puts also more spacing. So if you ever need that, that is a thing. So negative 200, but I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So it's on the left-hand side here, happens to be just different individual words, whole bunch of paragraphs to show you guys what might be wrong here. So things like this WA, look at this for an example, right? I'm gonna put capital W on my left, capital A on my uh, right. And we're gonna say right here, I'm gonna say negative 90. And that might not be good enough, so I'm gonna say negative 120. So you can see how it's kind of getting a lot closer. Maybe that's not good enough either. Some of these letters are gonna have to put like maybe a lot more than you think, negative uh, 200. Now the A and the C does not look right, capital A, capital C. So this is what's gonna be taking a lot of your time out of your font. So let's say negative 90. And now to me, this looks way, way better. So things like the R and A might need to get fixed a little bit. I'm just gonna, oh, A and V, look at that. Look how much spacing is between there. So capital A, capital V. Let's go ahead, let's shrink this down, I'll give you 120. It's actually gonna be a little more, negative 150. And you're just kinda like eyeballing and kinda figuring out what looks physically, like what looks right, right? D on my left, A on my right, I'm gonna say 120 automatically. And to me, that looks a little bit better, maybe a little less on this, and a little more on the AV. Mm -hmm. So now this word David looks a lot better. Right, so I'm gonna just keep on going. You're gonna find a whole bunch of letters. You're gonna do a lot. So you can see on mine, I don't know if you guys saw, but there's a big scroll bar and there's so, so very much to look at. Um, so I'm gonna just keep on going. Oh, hey, that's my name, dude. All right. Um, we're just gonna keep going. Like, I'm just gonna look for one more little combination really quick. Maybe the L and T. So L and T, I also changed the L to not be that long anymore because that was really disgusting. But L and T, we'll just say like negative 90 and kind of have those overlapping a little more, something like that, right? So that's basically what kerning happens to be. That's gonna take you so much time. You're not even kidding, it's gonna take you so much time. It's also very, very important. You do not want words to look very weird and awkward. I'm gonna type the word in like font. Let's look at thumbnail. I'm just gonna try, try, try to find one more, like Cisco HQ, um, Jake. That's not, that's Jack. All right, so you can see I'm not the best uh, wrong um, Trump. I don't know why that followed those two things. Um, here, you can just type in different words you might be using, but I would just basically look to your left here. I'm gonna just keep on looking really quick for one more maybe. All right, AU. You see how the separation between this looks very, very awkward. Also, the U to N is actually a little bit too close to me. So I'm gonna say UN, I'll drag it over here and put this like probably positive 40 or so like that, right? And then maybe NN, positive 40 as well, because look how close that is as well. And then maybe go ahead and just use that AU, as you see over here, and then negative 90. So this might look complicated, but you can see it also fixes itself right here. A to T, you might have to do this as well. You're gonna have to be doing this for a long time. Um, I went through hell and back, I think it was like maybe eight to nine hours on doing this. So font creating is not short. It's not gonna be a one kind of, it's not gonna be a one hour thing, right? No matter what, it's gonna take you guys time, but this is basically the whole part of font stuff. It makes it that much simpler for you guys. It makes it super easy to update things and it really makes it super easy for just for anything font related, right? Um, like I said before, the whole preview thing is very, very cool. And you can also type in any letters that you want on that little preview bar they have up here. Just like, like the font.com that has like, you type in your letter or whatever and you kind of see what it looks like. So this is basically what this is gonna be going on for. So I'm gonna, of course, be creating myself some more fonts in the future, but you can also download right now Quantum. This is the un verf uh different it's a different version but you'll see in the beginning this is not quantum this is the other one <laughs> uh quantum you'll be seeing that uh it's a very cool font it's also really really it just looks really sexy dude so this is what i'm talking about when it talks about new style so that little drop down right there so i worked in it for a very very long time i do hope you guys enjoy the font itself i hope you guys download it it's currently on selfie and it's going to be on its own i'm going to advertise it personally on selfie it's also going to be on default.com if you want but i'm going to of course advertise the selfie one because i just want to see how many personally downloads it's going to be getting and of course you guys I don't know. I just hope you guys enjoy it. I know it was a longer video. I'm just trying to explain as much as possible. I want to get it straight to the point, but the the like of this video does not say how hard it might be or how innovative or how 
uh, you know, struggle using fonts of it, it, it is, no. The whole part of this video is kind of like creating it. The whole length of the video is creating the font. Once you create it, everything else is very, very simple with font self. So this video, of course, was sponsored by font self. And uh, I personally already purchased the actual license when I first got it, maybe like six months ago or so. And I created, of course, the Oasis font or Osis font, excuse me. Um, so of course, when I purchased it there, I kind of contacted them and I said, I really liked it. They liked my channel and we kind of kind of collab, right? So I already know this works for me. And of course you can purchase it currently with a discount link down below. Uh, so it's really, really cool. I really hope you guys do enjoy. And uh, that is the video for today. I'm gonna go ahead and just say very, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys waited to this video. I know it's not gonna be like 40 minutes long. It's a long video, but fonts are difficult, but I wanna give you guys every insight, every current information that I currently have right now, uh, because I know it's something that I'm gonna be, of course, updating and kind of figuring out more and more on. But using font self makes it so, so easy. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna just call it a day. And we're gonna talk to you guys next week. I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive. And stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Ask the switch you. Yeah. You guys should do that.